Did you know that your Wi-Fi router can cause poor cell phone reception in your home? Welcome back to Pushing Technology to Limit. Today I want to talk about Zero Shell and Failover Internet. We have lots to talk about today. And I'll just give you a brief overview of what I'm doing here as far as Internet is concerned. Uh, I've uh, recently got um, cell phone internet and phone service just to get away from the voice over internet uh, phone uh, services. And last year I got cable internet. Two weeks ago we had a snowstorm that knocked out our cable internet. So I'm like, oh great, now what? Uh, I went right to my cell phone internet and was able to keep going through my entire network. Every computer on our network was able to have internet. So, why is it so hard to set this thing up? It's A lot of it is just the knowledge of the person that's writing the documentation. Uh, they've never really uh, proofed their work and tried to get it going. I also want to talk about um, the weighted internet and I'll get to more into that when I show you on the screen of my computer. Well, what is the weight, anyways? It's not the speed, as I've been reading about on the internet. It's priority. You take a weight. You take one that is 10 pounds versus the 5 pounds. Who's going to drop faster? The 10 pounds of weight. So basically what the weighted internet connection is, is priority. How much is that connection the, the highest priority? And the heaviest one is going to go, go back up again when the unit, the zero shell, decides you know, that, and it's tested that it's uh, back up and running again. So today that's what we're going to do is we're going to uh, help you set up the failover on zero shell. Now, many of the documentations I've read and things on the Zero Shell forms themselves, people have not been able to get this thing to work. Well, there's a... I'm not, and I don't mean I'm not trying to blame Zero Shell being the problem. It could just be about anything. It could be the router modem that you've got connected. It could be incompatibility problems with either an Ethernet card or, or a modem. Uh... The way that I have got this set up is with a standard uh, store-bought modem. Well, actually, not a modem, but a router uh, that I've got from TP-Link. Fix the issue. So if you have another router kicking around, it would be one of those circuit board routers like TP-Link, uh, Netgear's, um, oh, some of those other brands that are out there. I can't think of all the other brands. But get yourself a real router. Now, I'm not saying that Zero Shell is not a real router, but there's some kind of issue with uh, the hardware between your router modem combination and Zero Shell. Now, um, I'm going to show you the setup uh, with all the equipment and uh, how to get it all plugged in and all that. Let me show you my uh, cell phone. Uh, equipment right now and then we'll get to the routers. So here are my two AT&T cell phone base units that have both internet and telephone service. This is a wired telephone unit. So on the back I've got all my connections. Now the one that you see at the very front that's green lit only has telephone because the phone service that I've got is shared internet, so it doesn't make sense to have both of them connected together. And let me show you the back of these units. So on this first router that I've got here, I have the telephone cable, the RJ45 uh, Ethernet cable, and the power all connected that's going down to the basement. Down here you'll see the uh, modem that goes to my cable internet, the TP-Link router, and here's both of my zero shells running. One's a test router, and the other one is my main router. Now why do I have this set up like this? So that 
whatever I test, I don't mess up my main router that I'm uh, using with the network. The test router is just going to be connected to a computer, which we'll get to that in a few minutes, and mess with it to our heart's content. So, what's back here is our cable modem, like I had a, a, a far away shot, so this is close. So this is connected to both zero shells. This uh, TP-Link router that I just talked about uh, is the taking the internet from the cell modem and making it so that both zero shells down here actually have internet through the cell system. And then it goes off into my network over here with the switches and all the computers that are uh, connected to it. Now the one issue that I'm still having with Zero Shell is the quality of service. Now if you have watched my previous videos on quality of service I got it working on one internet connection. Now my problem is, is having two internet connections coming together and trying to make two different classes of speeds. One for the uh, cable modem and the other is for the cell phone modem and I cannot get that to work for the life of me. Now I can get the uploads to work but not the downloads. Now I can get make one class for the entire download system whether it's the cell phone uh, internet or it's the cable internet but what I want to complete is making it so that uh, both uh, the cable modem and the cell phone modems have their own class of speed. So one will be slower than the other. And when the fail system takes effect, when the cable goes down, the cell phone modem takes over, then that quality of service for the cell phone modem will be in place rather than the quality of service uh, for the uh, cable modem. So um, right now I can't seem to do that. It's either one or the other. You basically got to be here to man the system. And what I mean by that is so when you know that your internet is reduced you have to go into zero shell and turn off the quality of service for each system whether it's your cable modem you got to turn that one off then you got to turn on your cell phone modem quality of service and then have your classes all set up and and that's really an awful lot of stuff to have to get into right now because that is uh, on a previous video which I'm not really going to be cover on this one uh, when I do get the dual class uh, quality of service for um, to work on zero shell then I'll make another video on two lines of internet with quality of service but until then uh, we're just going to get the fail over the work now where to place your cell phone modem if you are going to use your uh, cell phone for your internet backup now earlier in the video I talked about how uh, your Wi-Fi router causes uh, cell phone reception uh, it can be poor. Well, during the setup here, uh, I've been messing around with a bunch of things, and I had a room dedicated just for my cell phone modem, so that it was strictly there and nothing else was going to interfere with it. So being the dumbass I was uh, at different times, I thought, well, I'll move my Wi-Fi router in there. Well, it's actually an access point uh, to actually kind of, you know, get it closer to some other rooms that I needed. I thought, well, I'll move it in there. Well, come to find out, I've had worse cell phone reception since I moved my wireless access point pretty much near it. Now in this room I didn't used to be able to get uh, cell phone service too good because of the wireless router being in here. Didn't really need it in here that much. I mean I do but uh, I wanted to have Wi-Fi have better uh, areas in the house and where I put it I can get cell or Wi-Fi signals throughout the house rather than just having it here on this side of the house. 
uh, I've got it in the middle of my home rather than at the end of my home. So when you are planning to use a cell phone modem, whether it's a cell phone base or it's just an actual cell phone, I would make sure that your uh, cell phone is far enough away from any Wi-Fi router. And in these uh, routers that I have, the cell phone modem routers that I've got, I've actually went in and turned off all of the Wi-Fi in, uh, enabled on it and just went strictly with wired for that purpose. And not even just for that purpose, but I didn't want to have anybody accessing the cell phone router modem by itself. I wanted to have to go through my network first and my other router to be able to get the internet. So let me get to my screens and uh, show you how to set up your uh, internet failover system. And there's a lot there, but it's simple. Once you get in there, you're like, oh, well, this is pretty sweet. I can do this. So it's, it's just a snap once we get into it. So let me uh, switch over to my computer and we'll show you how to get everything functioning the way it ought to. Okay, so now we are here where there is no uh, internet whatsoever uh, at, at the home page here. Now, to set things up, now we're basically going to start from scratch. So if you watched my beginner's uh, guide on Zero Shell, you know uh, how to set this up. But for those that have never seen it, uh, these are my connections. Zero Zero is my local network. This uh, Ethernet one is for my servers, and then the other two are my internet connections. Let me give you kind of a now for me. I'm just going to call this a rule of thumb, but I don't know if this actually will be for everybody, but. I've had problems with setting this thing up with the if this one's uh, internet and then this one is network and then this one is internet for like your second connection or whatever I I have had problems with that so my rule of thumb for myself and maybe uh, you can try it for yourself but my rule of thumb is to always have your network whatever if you have one or if you have two and you want to do two different separate networks uh, are always up on top your internet is always on the bottom or vice versa or your internet is always on the top and then your uh, network is down here at the very bottom depending on how you want to set it up but never never have your uh, network in the middle between the two internet connections I don't know why it didn't work out for me so basically here we're going to set up our modems uh, statically now we don't want to use DHCP or anything like that on these uh, connections so what we do is now here you can see that my Ethernet 2 is 100 megabits. That's my TP Link router. So this is my emergency internet. Now my Ethernet 3 is my cable modem. Now we'll see if this has any effect. I don't I've never tried this off screen before, but I usually try to make the rule of thumb is my master connection which is my cable modem is always the first one on the list of, of network cards now if we have any problems I'm gonna pause the recording and then have to switch my cables around down cellar so anyways let's get started and set this sucker up and the first thing I'm going to do is put my uh, IP address. Now you can't see it over here on my screen because it's on my uh, second screen over here. Now I'm going to add an IP and then I'm going to paste it 
and make it five. Now the reason why I'm making it five because I have other things that are connected on another router. So uh, I'm just going to be on the safe side without having to look. Now here's my cable modem. Do the same thing. And let's see here. I'll make that. And I, I'm just copy and pasting it just because for you guys to be faster. You don't have to do what I'm doing. But you can just type it in. To me, it's faster just to do this. So now my uh, modem modems are set up. The next thing to do is to... Now, you don't have to do this in perfect order, but since we're here, I'm just going to do it. I'm going to just nat these two. Now, to make, I, I've had to do all three, but just to be on the safe side, we're just going to do the two and three network cards. All right, save. Now, this is where the uh, action happens is you click over here on your router tab. There's no routers listed in this thing at all. So basically we need to go over uh, step one and two like we did before, but differently. So, uh, let's see here, add a gateway or router or route or however you want to call it. And then I'm going to paste it in here, remove everything and do a zero. And then... I'm going to paste my gateway in. Now this is my cable modem. And then I want to do one. I don't understand about metric. If somebody else understands about that, please put it in the comments. I don't know what it's supposed to be there for, but I've got to put it in. Now you see that this interface is up. Now you put the second uh, gateway in for your backup router or, or modem or whatever it may be that you are uh, connected to the zero shell and I'm just gonna do this one first because it's quicker and then you don't have to do this backwards but I just decided to do it this way and then I'm going to do two click OK now your Routers say that they're up, or your routes, your static routes. I call them routers because that's what basically they are, but they're routes to your internet connection. Now, you can go back to setup and see if it actually changes to green. Now, it may not because we don't have everything fully set up, but I like to see if it actually does. It does not. So we need to go over to Net Balancer over here and... Uh, enable that now this is where it gets interesting because here like I talked about earlier about the weight this is what you want to change now not this you don't want to do anything with the default at all so what I'm going to do is make my master uh, internet connection the very top so I'm going to put that in here and then I'm going to make this 10 because this is going to be the most, the highest weight that you can get on, on this uh, setup here. So I'm just going to type in cable and then click save and so it says active. Do the same thing for your uh, backup internet, whether that may be. Maybe it's your uh, uh, DSL modem, a, a cell modem, whatever it may be. You put this one in. And you got to make sure that you've got the gateway correct or it will not connect. Now, I'm going to leave this one at 1. I want it at the lowest. And then... I'm going to uh, say sell and then just click save. Now they're both active. Now what do you want to do next is 
to go over here. Now you can keep these active like this. It doesn't matter. But if you want to use your cell modem or whatever modem that you may have connected to the second uh, or first port on your router, uh, you can leave them there. But if you want to use them for a, a failover, you need to tell the router, the zero shell, to be in failover state. So now this turns your second modem into a spare. Now if you had, you know, say like two extra things of internet, you could have uh, those as spares. Now maybe you really don't want that, but if you are, that's the way you set this part up. Now it's going to get a little bit, uh, I'm not going to say tricky really, but just more setups here. Enable the uh, failover monitor. Click save. Now, actually, uh, before you click save, if you don't have PPOE connections, like I do not, I'm going to tell it no. Now, depending on, I found these default settings here, 3, 5, 4, and 5, a little bit too slow. I mean, we've had the delay there with, so basically what we are doing is we are setting this failover monitor we gotta put some IP addresses down here and then the router will uh, detect or test the connection every whatever interval you want whether it's you know and don't ask me what a, a, a probe is maybe it's like a ping don't ask <laughs> I don't know but anyways I just know that you've gotta have this thing set up properly for it to roll over. Now I set everything to one probe and one second so that it's basically checking all the time. Now you might need to say like in one instance that I've had this thing set up and you didn't see this on on uh, the video but I've had to set, change these numbers by a little bit but keeping them small under three to make them work now what you want to do here is put now you can have one you can have two you can have three it's up to three so uh, I'm going to put in my uh, IP addresses now these are what we call DNS servers and I don't know why it's, it just says it wants a public address and it doesn't tell me which address that I need so you cannot put your router in here I've tried it and it says it will not work so you gotta look up DNS I've got one over here that's a bunch of different uh, addresses I'm using uh, open DNS from my first uh, let's see here I gotta get the thing highlighted and then paste that in. I'm using um, some other, I don't know what this thing is called. Uh, oh, you can't see it over here, I'm sorry, but uh, it's scub something. I can't read what they had there, but um, I'm going to just put that in my second one. And, and you're basically getting the idea and you gotta enable this and then I'm going to use my last one now I used just primary DNS servers I didn't use uh, their secondary DNS servers now you can even use your internet service providers uh, DNS servers if you want it doesn't matter but I just wanted to uh, have enough to just be sure so if one of those goes down I can still ping another address now if you want to test it you can test it here and then looking at the results when it says you can so now down here it says something about you know it failed or something I don't know um, but we'll see how everything works but that's basically I just click it on again make sure it's all uh, all there all saved up 
Okay, now we can look at the reports, see what happened. Um, let's see here. Okay, so it tells you what it is. Don't it doesn't doesn't really mean anything to me. Maybe it means something to you, but you can just look at that. So basically, you're set up for the internet failover. So when you come over here, uh, you can see that we've got internet. Now I haven't tried any testing. Now I don't have my computer uh, set up for the actual internet for this router. I will eventually, but just to show you how everything is set up, uh, I'm going to do a small test, and that is to actually disable uh, my uh, cable modem. So. I'm going to just tell it to go down. Now, when we did the, uh, let's see here, the net balancer, see, it went right from uh, from active to fault, and now this one is no longer spare, and this one's active. And it was just instantaneously. Now, you don't have to wait for a card to go down, because this is definitely set up for to ping the internet connection all the time now if you go back to setup it's going to take a little bit because my speed on my uh, cell phone internet is a little bit slow but it says that there's internet which means that it's working fine so um, if I go back and tell it to uh, you know, I'm going to enable it again. Then we come back over here, and then it shows it's back active and spare. And basically, this is how you get your failover to work. And any zero shell. I mean, like I said, I've. I mean, I didn't really say that I'm using the older 3.2, but really, this is how you set it up on all releases of zero shell. It doesn't matter. I I don't really. I've never upgraded my zero shell. I've tested them. Didn't really care for the newer ones. I've i just like what I've got with my old one. And what's the purpose of upgrading if none of them really? I haven't seen any difference between the the new ones and the old ones. Really. Um, so basically, that's how you uh, get your internet to fail over. Now we're going to go to the basement and we're going to do, I'm actually going to take my camera, I'm not going to be able to have a really a screencast here, but I'm going to actually pull the, the, the internet cable from the physical modem itself and we'll see what it does. Now this is the proof. Now you shouldn't have to have your uh, Ethernet card like I did over here, I shouldn't have to be no link detected or disabling it for it to work at all. So my uh, foolproof test to make sure that everything's working properly: pull your your uh, your cable out of your modem, whether that's a phone cable or it's a uh, coaxial cable, whatever you have uh, that's plugged into your modem. So let's get to that now and go down there. Here we are at my cable modem down here in the basement. So I'm going to actually take the cable, the, the coaxial cable right here, out of the modem. And it's a little bit hard trying to do this one-handed. I can do this easier with two hands. But I wanted to show you that I was actually taking it out. And uh, so you have no doubts that I'm just editing something to make it look like it's going to work. So, it's going to be a few more turns. Alright. So now, there's my cable out of my modem. Now let's see what happens, because there's still Ethernet plugged into this thing. And to show you that, there's my two Ethernet ports. Let's see here. I can't even see it on my screen, it's so dark. Alright, there we go. There's my two Ethernet ports and the empty coaxial port on my modem. So let's get over to the screen now and see what happens. Okay, so right now we're here on setup, and my uh, mouse is running over setup here. 
and I'm going to click on network and then I'm going to scroll down and show you that uh, the uh, cable modem is still active the cell modem is still active and if we come over here to net balancer you'll see that it says fault for the cable modem and then my cell modem says it's active so when we uh, uh, come up here to a new tab we should be able to get into my uh, well actually here's a page my YouTube channel I got my YouTube uh, page already here so we'll see what it does if it actually comes up and it should it's just going to take a little bit so here's the YouTube channel uh, of my uh, my show. So that means that the uh, the internet is actually working for the cell now. And all you have to do is uh, plug your cable back in and watch what happens. It should go right back to to where it was before. Now I'm going to go back over to my network. And then um, I'm going to, so you can see that we're still active. And now I plug the cable modem back in the actual copper cable. And we'll see what happens. Alright, so here it says active again. So it means that we went from down, which was fault, to, to up, which is active. And this one now is back to spare. So everything is working perfectly fine here. Now if for some reason... Uh, you need to make an adjustment we can do some balancing rules and we can do that here and I'll quickly do that uh, in a few minutes so let me uh, switch over in uh, to another screen here right now we're in the net balancer so go over to balancing rules and then click add this is only if you want to set up like certain devices to work with uh, a modem say uh, so like if you want something that's going to automatically switch now I don't know why I haven't really seen the reason to do this when if it automatically switches by itself it it just does it so why need this but if you are one that wants to do a lot of customizing this is where you do it so your default gateway is not applicable because there is no default gateway and then there's the cable internet and then there's the cell internet so what do you do is you uh, set up your network card and then that would be your computer or network subnet so it'd be like uh, so this is my uh, network So this is my computer. Now if you want to do a network, so like you can do dot one dot you know this whole address over again with dot two fifty four or dot two fifty three. Uh and that way it would do your entire network without having to uh customize each device that's there. But if you want to say like I want this computer that I'm on right now to automatically switch over you just leave it on auto and then you just confirm it and then you're all done except for saving the changes and then say like if you want to add another one <clears throat> whatever that may be uh, say like you got a device on uh, Let's say uh, I think my other one is number two, so like I can do 177.235.234. Or, oops, I hate. All right, so this is just a fake address. I don't have this address, but I'm just saying that this could be something. And then you would just, uh, well. Yeah, it's not right real. Um, let's see here. 
So it's fussy. Huh. Well, it must be because I don't have any addresses signed to that card. That's why I'm having problems. So I can't, I would have to go back. But you see what I mean. Uh, and then you just tell it, you know, you want this, you want this address to come over to cable only. Or whatever other dress you have, uh, you want it to go over to sell only. And then that way, if and if the internet goes down, it it won't automatically switch unless like this uh, gateway here. So this one right here that my physical computer connected to this router on would automatically switch. Now this is a little bit more advanced. I have not seen the reason why I need to do this or any of you need to do this, but I have seen in other setups that I've done that you can really customize this router down to a T and if you have both gateways active, so like if you come over back here to manage, so if both these uh, modems are running, one's not a spare, you can actually designate uh, whatever you want a certain amount of traffic from this Ethernet card or another Ethernet card to go to modem A or modem B. But in my case, I don't need that. But I know that this is a little more uh, advanced than what I was going to get into. But since I kind of mentioned about it, I just thought I'd just quickly uh, uh, say something about it. And uh, But I've got some further tests to do here. And... Uh, we're going to actually show you how the uh, uh, rollover works with the uh, modems when it fails over from cable to cell. I'm going to show you that next. Okay, so we got a fresh page here opened up. So let's try a search. Let's try searching Amazon. Right there. And there we go. And we can get on to... Uh, Amazon books so this actually is working uh, the way it is so if we uh, let's see here um, let's try a video uh, like I don't know XP So let's see if there's any videos on XP just just to actually see if we can actually get something to play. So let's uh, try uh, playing a video. Well, actually, this isn't a video. I don't know why it shows up as a video. But <clears throat> anyhow, uh, here's uh, YouTube. That's the one we wanted. So let's try playing a video. And I'm not sure if that if you can actually hear it with the screen, but let's uh, let's try uh, doing something with the internet here. So let me go back to my router, and then I'm going to go to network, and then shut my. Uh, cable modem off and let's see, let's see just see what happens and now it's active and we still got video playing so here it is and it's playing perfectly fine on my uh, cell phone internet so I'm a little bit distracted with the, the noise but it's working perfectly and it says there's internet and you know there's internet because there's a video running in the background which I don't know why it's taking a little bit for it to connect but I don't know if you can hear all that racket in the background of, of my uh, my room here alright so it says we have internet and you go back over here and you see again it's active 
So anytime that the internet goes down, nobody knows that it goes down. Now let me get rid of this thing. So, um, why isn't it playing another one? Anyways, um, let's try another uh, video here. And we'll go back simultaneously. Just get going. Let's see here. All right, so let's see here. If it, if it, let's see how it plays, anyways, because that one was already kind of downloaded. So let's see here. All right, so that's active. So we're on the cell internet now. Like I said before, it's kind of buffering a little bit. Let's see here. Let's uh, kind of do a refresh here. Well, it's not too friendly with videos, I guess. Um, but let's try another another video. See what happens. So it's still it's connected, but it really it's taking a lot of time to buffer a video. So it might this uh, uh, cell internet that we have may not work for YouTube videos, but it's still working. And we can try another another uh, web page here just to. Uh, just to see how it, how it works. So let's uh, try Facebook. Whoops. Well, I typed. I didn't get all of it out. I just wanted Facebook. But as you can see, we're still we still have internet, even though that the main connection is down now. So we can go to Facebook and log in if we wanted to. I don't really have Facebook on this computer, but it, it it's not it's not that bad, but. It's a little bit slower because we're on cell internet instead, but it's not bad. And uh, so there you are. You can log right in. And uh, anyhow, um, that's about it. And it's working perfectly fine. But for YouTube videos, I don't see it really going to work. Uh, So there's a little bit of delay, but it's it's okay. Let's try uh, another video. See if something else would come up. Thank you, thank you, Christian. All right. So it did. I don't know why the other ones were coming up so slow, but it might be a high def video. So this is working fine on our uh, cell phone internet here. So here we are back again. And there we are with the cell modem working perfectly fine. No, no buffering. No nothing. It works just like it was on the cable but just a little bit slower. So anyways, I wanted to show you that that thing worked. And uh, I'm going to get my, uh, my cable modem back up here again. And we'll be all set to go. So if you want to set up QoS, this is QoS, and you just turn that on. I'm not going to deal with that in this video, but I'm not really sure about how to get two different uh, classes of like download speed for like... Uh, the cell modem and the cable modem to work simultaneously together so when one fails it's kind of universal where it's just everything just 
flows, but I haven't got that quite working. So basically that's how you set up your uh, failover internet to work with your, your zero shell. So that's basically how you set up your zero shell to work for failover internet. It really works perfectly well for me. Uh, if you ever uh, are looking for the uh, QoS, uh, you're going to have to look back farther in the video and try tinkering with it because right now I'm not sure how to get that to work with two uh, internet sources, but it will work for one internet connection. And, uh, you know, from there, I'm, I'm going to be doing some other videos trying to uh, get it to work, but I'm going to have to do some more testing, and it's going to be a little bit of time before I do another one on Zero Shell. Uh, if you found this video helpful, please thumbs it up. Share it with your uh, friends, family, uh, whoever's trying to use this and get Internet Failover to work. Uh, know that there's other equipment that uh, may or may not work and it's just going to be trial and error but just keep in mind though that just have your uh, internet either at the top of your system or the bottom of your system so that you don't have your network uh, in the middle of everything else that's the reason why I had such a hard time getting it to work before that you never saw because I never did this on camera uh, I just uh, did it, you know, off camera and then got it to work perfectly, then showed you how to make it work. So if you uh, like this video, please subscribe to my channel. Uh, just tell other people out about how uh, this video has helped you. And uh, I'll see you the next time on Pushing Technology to the Limit. Have a great day.